Hello and welcome back to my channel. So guessing all are well. Here is another video from the What's Inside series. It's of a JVC MX J30 audio system. So enjoy y'all. Have any doubts? Post them down in the comments. Here we go. So this system has a 100 watts per channel mini system with two way speaker, three CD, triple tra changer, full logic, double cassette, auto reverse system and it's a 100 watts per channel as I said mini RMS active bass extension so and so it's a really good old component system. So let's see. So in order to disassemble this audio system you have several screws to remove for removing body it's simple two at two sides and about four at the rear which will remove the top metallic casing. This is the inside of the system, it's a highly packed inside. What you're seeing now is the 3 CD changer mechanism, that's a CD changer mechanism right there, having a old CD in it. It has a rolling front panel, that's what white thing that's so up there, it's transformer, the blue color thing is a speaker relay, protection relay actually. That's a voltage selector. That's an amplifier circuit, that's a really the STK is down there. That's a separate daughter board actually, the amplifier plugs into the main board. That's a rectifier section, giant diodes, built really well. Those are the flex cables, it's pretty old. Uh, this is what that I sold you, the front tray opening system. It's not actually a tray, like uh, all the switches and buttons are in a moving front panel. That's for the mic system as well as a motor control for that front panel. I guess it's missing from this. This is actually main audio processing board of this device. Not so much going like the Sony devices has a lot of chips. This one kind of lacks. It's don't having all that much of equalizer capabilities and all. That what you see right there is a voltage regulating section for the most of the everything for the system. That's tape deck. BIOS controls and all. Okay, let's keep disassembling. Two screws at the front and two at the back will remove the CD changer. Nothing much is actually really simple to disassemble. That's it, removing those four screws will and untying that flex cable will remove the CD changing mechanism. Bulky thing, kind of a stupid design actually. You could have gone with a carousel mechanism like Sony's. 
this uh, inside view of the main motherboard actually the sound processing motherboard that board this front panel as well as bass boost and all are inside this and this board that you see at the last the bottom one that's a power board main ac out of the transformer rectification everything is handled by that board it's kind of like the power motherboard and all it's nothing related to the audio processing and all that's what actually delivers power to the entire device it's actually a kind of clever mechanism a single motor running both decks not kind of clever it's actually little overloading for the single motor two decks and a single motor for everything it's full logic deck means it's not controlled by the tactic switches it's full soft touch control buttons pretty neat for an old device let's keep on disassembling We cut four, two screws on either ends, removing that will free up the amplifier circuit. Actually the amplifier heats in from the main board. If there is something that I am telling that is not correct, you can uh, correct me in the comment box. Basically disassembling anything is simply like you know, remove whatever screws that you see. Then think about fitting it later. Best option is that one remove any screws that you see you can disassemble it but putting it back is another story all together itself those are for the speaker actually the speaker board and all are is a separate board actually plugs into the main power board actually everything is separate it's not like and everything is built into a single board it's actually uh, each individual component has its own daughter board inside it almost all the component systems are like that on my previous one of the videos relating the Sony uh, MHCW55, people were asking what type of IC it was running on. I'm guessing it's a STK411 or something. This is a 415, 100 watts per channel. That's about 90 or something per channel. I don't know about that. I, clearly, I don't remember. This one runs 100 watts per channel. That makes it 200 watts altogether. STK is a pretty good you know all in one amplifier package uh, requires subtle amount of other components for running it that's actually the audio input for the amplifier circuit output from the sound processing board into the amplifier circuit it's a latching type of cable actually sold out cable lens are plugging into it simple kind of mechanism actually it's everything is put on really simply that's from the bass boost circuit and all i was telling from front you can lift it out it's actually latched you have to uh, open the latch then you can pull it out all of the amplification circuit and voltage regulation and everything is in single module see stk411 that's a main amplifier 200 watts package everyone is really fond of stk actually it's a really high power it can put out a thumb you know that's a voltage regulation board connectors see those latches kind of broke one good caps that's a speaker connecting daughter board even that can be removed overall view of the board actually I'm not going to disassemble any further because you can see everything is just over here it's all interconnected with latch connectors see like that it all can be disconnected nothing else to remove out here simply everything is latched on this is actually the amplification happens in this and air board nothing else rest of it is power as well as thank you for watching i will come back with yet another video please consider subscribing to my channel